Mark, it is wonderful to have you, and congratulations for your new book. Thanks, David. It's uh, always great to, uh, to see you here in New York. So this is The Maker Revolution. And this is the second book that you write. That's correct. Your first one? Uh, the Maker Movement Manifesto. And uh, that was a really important book to describe uh, what the Maker Movement kind of the is. Kind of the gestalt of the Maker Movement, kind of the core principles, you know, fun, sharing, you know, playful, so forth. Uh, in this new age of experimentation, it is very important to be able to own the knowledge uh, for the tools of production that are not removed, right. uh, but that empower individuals yeah. who are passionate and creative to go from an idea to a prototype, to a product exactly. as rapidly as possible. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the fundamental um, impact that the maker movement is having is enabling people to be able to make things with their hands again. Uh, and sometimes very sophisticated things. So the, the power of the computers have made it very easy to work with very sophisticated and powerful tools. In, uh, in a very quick manner. Um, and the tools have gotten cheaper over time as well. So you've got this you know, triple whammy. It's easy to use, it's very powerful, and it's incredibly cheap. Uh, and that's helping to drive the entire movement. And, and, and the maker spaces are uh, the places and tech shop that you founded and you were CEO of yeah. um, uh, where people can learn these skills and, and apply themselves uh, in the direction Yeah, I think there are 1,600 maker spaces, uh, uh, last count between Fab Labs, hacker um, spaces, maker spaces. Uh, I expect to see that grow exponentially. Um, I'm firmly convinced every elementary school, junior high, high school um, will have a makerspace within the decade, uh, which means something on the order of 100,000 to 150,000 makerspaces just in the United States. So, you know, we're going to see four, five, six, seven hundred thousand makerspaces around the globe. And the amount of creativity and, and uh, empowerment and confidence uh, oh, yeah. that people can achieve through this is going to be tremendous. It's, it's, mind, it's mind blowing. I mean, it, um, the, I, I like to say that the largest untapped resource on the planet is the free time, cognitive surplus and creativity uh, of the creative class. It's those folks that are going to be able to help solve our most difficult challenges. And if they've got access to the tools, the industrial revolution, at price points and with ease of use that we've never seen before, it, literally in all of human history, um, it's a great time to, uh, to in, uh, innovate. So uh, what is in this book and how is it different from the previous one? Well, so the first one was really about the gestalt, like what, you know, what's going on in the movement, what kinds of activities that we're seeing and so forth. This one is much punchier and very direct. It says, here are the results that we've seen. In the last decade, we've seen these kinds of results um, out of uh, educational institutions. We've seen these kinds of results from real estate development companies. We've seen these kinds of results from economic development impact within a community. We've seen these kinds of results from manufacturers embedding these into their core business processes. So give me a couple of examples. Well, for example, Ford Motor Company was one of our early adopters, and I mentioned them in the first book. Um, and in the first book, we say they've already seen a 50% increase in intellectual property development. Well, we now know it, it exceeded 200% within five years. Um, so it went up from 50%, which is huge in and of itself, but it went up fourfold um, on top of that. Other examples, Samsung deployed uh, 300 of their uh, staff members through an, an eight-week program, and at the end of that eight weeks had captured $1.7 million in annualized savings. And so we're seeing companies like General Electric and Ford and others put makerspaces across um, in, in their research and development as well as their manufacturing facilities. Now, what is the role of uh, uh, human talent in facilitating the um, acceleration of uh, uh, how you realize the benefit of a makerspace? Yeah. You, you cannot just drop one in a desert and then uh, believe that everything will blossom spontaneously, yeah. right? No, I mean, that's something else that we've learned in the last decade, that um, these, these spaces require a public-private partnership. Um, there doesn't appear at this point to be a, like a, a strong, viable, pure economic model. Like if you open a makerspace like a Kinko's, they'll replicate across the U.S. Um, but the value that they create through the educational attainment that the people that come through, and I don't want to say kids, it's like kids of all ages. So, you know, increased educational attainment. 
uh, the impact of the economic development from the startups that spin out of these um, spaces and then for corporations that actually use them um, to help drive costs down, they, they capture a phenomenal uh, return on their investment. So if we bring in you know, educators, we bring in um, uh, the government at some level, we bring in corporations to work and collaborate together, it creates this milieu that is incredibly creative. So um, are the decision makers uh, who can accelerate these uh, public-private partnerships maybe one of the targets? Uh, for Absolutely. The state of California um, has uh, allocated uh, $18 million to help set up um, maker spaces across the junior uh, college network. Um, they've also set aside something on the order of $1.2 billion to do some advanced manufacturing efforts. Of course, what I'm trying to do then is saying, okay, now let's make it open access. Let, let, let's, let's not just leave it within the educational setting. Let's make sure that small businesses, uh, disadvantaged populations have access to it as well. And I'm getting a fairly receptive uh, audience. So, wonderful. Uh, the Maker Revolution, a new book from Mark Hatch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David.